Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is session 14, part 5 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue to discuss God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, focusing on the role God has and how God is and can be involved in our personal processes of forgiveness and repentance. The session was recorded on the 17th of April, 2018, from 10.30 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. I cannot repent fully without God's help. So here I want to uh, clarify with you, we spoke about being able to engage and complete forgiveness without involving God. We know it's going to be harder, longer, more arduous, but Mm -hmm. it's possible. Can I be truly repentant for all of my unloving actions and actions taken out of harmony with God's laws without involving God? Well, let's just rewind a little. The reason why I can truly forgive without God's help is because God has done nothing to us that we need to forgive. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we don't need to involve God in that process. Yeah. However, I have done plenty of things mm-hmm. towards God that I need to repent for. Well, <laughs> and here I'd like to then differentiate in our answer. There's mm-hmm. two sets of sins, if you like. We'll just make them up now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one is my sins against other people that I need to repent for. Yes. And then the other is sins against God. That's right. So first, my sins against others, can I engage with a process that's emotional about recognizing the truth of how I have truly harmed another, removing the emotional cause for that? Can I do that when I've done that harm to other people or the environment entirely in a self-reliant way, on my own without involving God? No, you can't. There's a very simple reason why. Yep. You have influenced others to have certain beliefs about God. Yes. And if you're not repentant for that, yeah. then you haven't fixed it with others either. Yeah. So, 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 so it's impossible, <laughs> literally impossible, to yep. go fully through the process of repentance without involving God. And repentance on all issues or just on issues that involve beliefs about God? Well, you can't see how you've hurt others yeah. with your beliefs about God. Yeah. You can't. Gotcha. Yeah. Look, because you don't, if you don't believe in God, you don't think you've hurt others yeah. by not having beliefs about God. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. So, so you can't see how you've hurt people mm-hmm. with your beliefs about God. So you can't see the full So how can truth. you be repentant towards those people and the harm that you've done to them? Yeah. You, you can't. Unless you, so you're saying basically to paraphrase, unless you see God's truth mm-hmm. about the harm you've done, to others. To others. You cannot repent. For the harm you've done to yeah. others. So then if we rewind again, if I'm talking about forgiveness without God, how can I come to see God's truth of what needs to be forgiven? Well, that's quite simple because it, your pain and suffering is demonstrating God's truth about what needs to be forgiven. Mm-hmm. You you can forgive it and you've and you've done. But but Because you're not experiencing the pain and suffering of the people you've harmed. You can complete the forgiveness process with people. Yes. You can't f- complete the forgiveness process in the sense of what damage is being done to yourself with God through yes. having false beliefs about God. Yeah. But you can complete it with people. It's done. Do yeah. you understand the difference? You're talking about forgiveness now? Yes. Mm-hmm. So the reason why is because forgiveness with people involves what you know what they've harmed you about so and if you don't feel someone teaching you something false about god has harmed you then of course there's nothing to forgive (laughs) does that make sense i think so Uh, yes so you have no emotions about being harmed by a person's beliefs about god yes and you have no emotions about that then there's nothing to forgive them for Mm -hmm. so you can complete the process of forgiveness without god so is that technically possible, though? I have been harmed if I've been taught untruth about God. Well, you know, you can. The forgiveness is about your relationship with others, right? Yep. Yep. And, and then what harm they've done to you. Yes. God has done no harm to you. Yes. 
others have done harm to you. Yes. So you can forgive others. Yes. There's, you don't have to forgive God. No. So there's no personal thing going on between you and God. And because you can, um, you are aware, if you become sensitive enough, if you develop the sensitivity enough to know what pain and suffering was created when another person harmed you, then you can adequately know that you've released all the pain and suffering and it's gone. Yeah, that other people taught you false beliefs, even about God. It's not about God. God no. has, you've got nothing to forgive God for that. No. You have to forgive them for that. So, yeah, I, I guess in the you previous understand? question, when we talked about involving God in the process of forgiveness, th my reference wasn't to forgiving God. It was just asking for God's assistance to help me in the process of forgiveness. Yes. Now, certainly you can ask God's forgive assistance in the process of forgiveness and it will help you, which but is you what we discussed. Yes, but you don't but need it to complete forgiveness. That's right. Yes. You don't. So, but now... Because because you can, you don't have to forgive God for anything. You only have to forgive people for what they did. Yes. Yes. Now, some of the things might be false beliefs about God, certainly. But, but that doesn't involve God, it's people. <laughs> they taught you the false beliefs about God. Yeah. You don't have to forgive God for that. God didn't do it. No. <laughs> you, people did it. No. So, so you're still not having to involve God in any way yep. in the process of forgiveness. Yes. In the process of repentance, very different. Yes. So if we now contrast that. Mm -hmm. um, so say I've murdered you. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I want to I decide in my very self-reliant way that I'm going to repent for that without involving God in the process. Mm -hmm. So um, that might involve me accepting the truth of what it means to take another human being's life, the impact that that has had on everyone around that person, the impact it has on the potentials that that person never fulfilled, the impact it has on the potentials that other people never fulfilled, uh, the, who might have had the possibility of having a relationship with them. It's a lot of things to repent for. Um, but you're saying, I can't complete that without God. No, that one you can. Yeah, that's. A, I just wanted to clarify <laughs> Because that. it doesn't involve when God. There's, that's except right. for the fact that you sinned against God by murdering one of his children. Yeah, so technically? Well, t well, technically, the fact that you've sinned against God by murdering one of his children means that you can't really complete the process of forgiveness. Yeah. You can towards the person. Yes. But you can't. Repentance, sorry. You yeah, you yeah. can repent yeah. towards the person yes. completely, yeah. but you haven't sorted it out with God. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. You yeah. can't complete the process of repentance without God yeah. because you haven't yet sorted it out with God. Yeah. So while you might have killed the person and done all that harm and you've mm -hmm. now gone through recognising everything and you've fully repented yeah. for all of that and everything else, you still haven't sorted out God part of it. The fact that you hurt one of God's children that God created yeah. and God gave life to. You yes. haven't sorted that part yes. out. <laughs> so and and that's like saying, okay, well I've I've repented for the impact I had on you. I've repented for the impact I had on people. I might even repent for the impact I've had on the natural environment by murdering you. But I haven't yet repented towards the creator of you for it, interfering with his creation. Her creation and That's her right. child and and limiting the potential of her child. That's right. So and it, and it gets even worse with false beliefs. And this is why false beliefs even have a worse effect on re repentance in the sense that they are more punishable. Yep. Because because if I've influenced a false belief in one of my brothers and sisters, yeah. particularly a false belief about God, yes, which is going to harm them for the rest of their existence while they have it. Yeah. And I don't recognize that. Yeah. No matter what repentance I have towards my brother or sister, I'm still not repentant. Yeah. Because I don't understand the damaging effect that my belief has had on their relationship with God and therefore their happiness. Mm -hmm. Mm. So now, see, this is where, so, so things like murder in some ways are not as bad yeah. as things like perpetrating false beliefs about God. Which is very sobering, isn't it? That's a very sobering fact. Yes. You know, if, if you've lauded atheism or lauded sort of blame of God in your family environment, um, you're saying See, it's that different that can be... Lord, uh, accepting atheism as a belief for yourself than teaching it to others. Sorry, and lauding is the wrong word. Enforcing, enforcing and threatening um, well, Not even that, just rejection. even teaching it is yeah. damaging enough. Yeah. All right. Just like teaching a false version of truth 
as, in, as Christianity is damaging. Yeah. Like, so by the way, the atheist and the Christian uh, preacher yeah. who both teach falsehood to their mm -hmm. adherents mm -hmm. are in just as bad a state from God's perspective in this issue. Yeah. They have not been repentant towards God. Mm. Right? Yes, and I suppose I was thinking more about um, the threat it, it, I was thinking more in the insidious family situation that occurs, that there's a threat of rejection, or often a threat of violence, if a, if a child doesn't adhere to whatever the belief system in the family is about God, whether it's atheism or, or some I kind of I think that false. applies in every family, though, doesn't it? Sort of like... That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. sobering. It's sobering well, that that why, in itself is This is, is why a lot of what parents have to forgive... Or repent for yeah. uh, how they've treated their children yeah. because they have become teachers of their children yeah. and then they've taught all this falsehood yeah. to their children. Yeah. So that, that's a very damaging thing to do. So, so yes, um, any time you set yourself up as a teacher and you teach falsehood to somebody, it's one of the most damaging things mm -hmm. you can do to their entire life, mm -hmm. particularly if they believe you. Yeah. If they don't believe you, then there's not <laughs> much of a problem, obviously. Yeah. But if they believe you yeah. and then they take actions about that, yeah. then obviously that's going to have a detrimental effect to the rest of their life. Yes, and that's what I was thinking about. You know, it's one thing to set up your little soap books box in the, you know, town square and stand up and go, here I am teaching this thing. Um, well, it's one thing to express an opinion compared to a teaching something. Yes, but you, you, people stand up on those things and say, this is the truth and I'm here to tell you. That's one thing, but, but that's hardly as... Um, influential as the family environment is on the belief system of a person and and that's i just think that that's quite a big deal yeah, yeah. it is a big deal yeah but also there's things like you know for example frequently i'm asked the question about earth change events mm -hmm. and now not so much because no one's worried about 2012 although my feeling is earth change events uh, are much more possible happening than they were then. Mm -hmm. So so frequently I ask my opinion. I tell my opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm not teaching a truth. That's my opinion. I've been asked for it. I give it because I'm transparent. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, I can't apologise for that. It's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. I have an opinion. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know the truth that it's going to happen. Yep. I, I can't say that for certain because it's a prediction of the future. I haven't got a connection with God enough, which I've told many people about, mm -hmm. that I can predict the future. Yeah. So I don't know if it's going to happen. Yeah. I've got, uh, you know, for certain, yeah. I feel it is because of what I observe and what I see and how God's laws are being broken and, and, mm -hmm. and the influences that are happening upon the planet. There's a lot of reasons why I believe what I believe, yeah. uh, all of which are, can be substantiated, you know, mm -hmm. the majority of them. So, so oh, I have my reasons for mm -hmm. believing it, but it's still an opinion. Yeah. Th that's different than me teaching God's truth. When I say God's truth about forgiveness and repentance, I'm teaching God's truth. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm wrong about that, yeah. then that's a severe problem. Yes. Like much more severe than me saying, I think, you know, yeah. earth change events are going to happen. Yes. That is a severe problem. If I teach a falsehood about love, mm -hmm. if I teach a falsehood about the truth of the universe that I'm saying is the truth, that's going to have much more of a detrimental effect on everybody mm -hmm. than me just saying my opinion is that there is going to be earth change events. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And this is why, you know, spiritual truths, a person who sets themselves up as a spiritual teacher needs to know very well that what they're teaching is true. Because if they don't, mm -hmm. they're causing a lot of detrimental effects to their own soul and the souls of others that they will never be able to repent for unless they engage God in the process. Mm. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And that and that's a, like it's a very important thing to understand and learn. And that's why in the Bible, there is statements in the Bible that say, if you're a teacher teaching falsehood, that is terrible for you. You know, there's, yeah. there's actual statements in the Bible that talk about that. And uh, I've, I've just paraphrased them, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, those statements are there to demonstrate the, res the terrible responsibility mm -hmm. of a teacher, mm -hmm. which is, if you affect other people's lives by your teachings mm -hmm. in a negative way that's out of harmony with truth, right, then you've got a lot of repenting to do, yeah. not only towards God, but also towards those people. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard. And this is why even people who have now progressed to the point of at one moment with God, who, who have been these teachers in the past, like Luther and ones like that, they are, they are now completely free of the emotional baggage, but they are still spending a large portion of their life unteaching. 
yeah. what they taught because yeah. they can feel the emotional responsibility of that. So even yeah. though they've been forgiven by God mm -hmm. completely mm -hmm. because they asked to be, you know, because they've gone through the process of repentance, they still are engaging corrective behavior yeah. in order to correct the false beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very important to see that, you know, that there are certain things and we'll go through some things that cannot yeah. be forgiven without God's help. But yeah. without God's help, like repentance, repentance is going to be absolutely impossible, mm -hmm. even towards our brother and sister. Mm. Which is notwithstanding the fact that um, by not involving God, even in the ways that we can kind of complete the process in some ways, it's going to be much, much harder because we do without that long list of things that God gives us that we mentioned in the previous section. Mm. So, yeah, some things is just impossible. Other things is going to be so, so hard. Well, yeah. some of the things that you feel about, you don't even believe in. Yeah. And so you can't forgive, be repentant for something you don't even believe in. So well, Sixth so Year Spirit, for example, yeah, yeah. doesn't believe that God's love is available, yeah. does not believe in the connection with the Holy Spirit does not believe in these things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the fact that you don't believe it means it's going to be impossible yep. to repent for not accepting it. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, you know, the, it, it, you set up for yourself a conundrum, really, mm -hmm. by, by not engaging the repentance process with God. And the conundrum is you can never repent for everything. Yeah. And this is why six-sphere spirits are in the sixth sphere. Yeah because they haven't gone through a process with God, mm -hmm. haven't started it yeah. in many cases. That's why they're limited to the sixth sphere and not the seventh and not mm -hmm. the eighth and not the ninth. Mm -hmm. The sixth sphere is the place where unless you deal with your stuff with God, you have no Go hope no further. of yeah. going further. Yeah. Even though you might think yourself to be happy, mm -hmm. you have no hope of progressing any further than that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is quite simple, because you've done a whole heap of things that have hurt others and hurt and, and, and harmed God's creations mm -hmm. that you are not sorry about because you don't even realize they were a problem. Yeah. 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 So it's very important for people to understand that without God's help, repentance is impossible. Yes. Good. <laughs> I think you've hammered that home. Mm. Let's talk about some of the things we've got in our notes. Yes. Okay. Um, there are certain sins, disobedience to God's law, that we engage that are not sins against our fellow humans only, but rather are sins against God. And I think you've made that clear. And I think you've also highlighted the ways that things that we think are not necessary, uh, might be just against fellow humans alone, do actually have some aspect of sinning against God, yeah, like so, taking another person's life. Yeah. So ones like that is pretty obvious, yeah. you know, but, but the other ones are not so obvious. Like if a person on earth says it doesn't matter if you have a relationship with God or not, mm. and they teach that. Yeah. That's a huge sin. Yeah. A huge sin. People yeah. don't realize it's so damaging to have that belief and, and so damaging if people who you are teaching accept that belief. Mm. Because it does matter. Like it's a, it's a huge problem if you don't do it. You're never going to have bliss your entire life if you don't accept God, God and go through the process of having a relationship with God. Yes. It's, a, it's a, the biggest thing that you could go wrong in your life. Why, why is somebody saying it's not a problem? So even just someone teaching an indifference, an indifference to God is a problem, you're saying? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's, a, it's a huge problem. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, people don't realize how big a problem it is because they, at this point in time, don't have the development to realize how big a problem it is. Mm -hmm. But when they come to seeing the truth, they'll go, wow, that's a huge thing <laughs> that I said there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it had a large no number of people who, depending on how many people followed it, mm -hmm. if a large number of people followed it as a belief system, as a structure, then all of those people basically are saying, it doesn't matter if God exists or not. I don't really have to have a relationship with God to be happy. Um, you know, so I can choose, and you can choose to not have a relationship with God. They're not saying that though. Mm. They're saying, instead of saying, you can choose to not have a relationship with God, which is a truth. Yeah. And there'll be no penalty for that. Yeah. They're saying it doesn't matter if yeah. you choose yeah. to not have a relationship with no God. There's no impact. Yeah. There's no impact. Which is And there's true. total crap. <laughs> like, there's nothing, there's, it's so, it's so wrong that, that, you know, it's one of the most basic fundamental <laughs> things that are wrong with any teaching on the planet, you yeah. know, to say that a relationship with your creator is, is not, not, you know, worth anything yeah. to you. 
is such a stupid thing to say, besides being uh, completely false and misleading and potentially damaging to mm. the people who listen mm. to it and believe it. Yeah. So you can see it, it can be quite insidious, yeah. some of these sins that we commit towards God yeah. and, and therefore also commit towards our brother and sister. Yes, mm. yes. All right, from our notes again. Mm -hmm. Unless we receive help from God, we will never be able to cease sinning against God and therefore never be completely repentant for our sins against God. So our sins against God include the sin against the Holy Spirit, yes. which is uh, rejecting God's love. Yeah, so this is basically not believing or not wanting to accept that God is offering God's love to us. Mm -hmm. This has a, a huge effect on our potential future happiness. Yep. In fact, it has the largest effect on our potential future happiness. You could, you could murder and not have as much of an effect. Mm. That's the reality, mm. right? So, so, so I'm not suggesting a person murders. What I'm suggesting is, by, and, and in fact, a person who, who accepts you know, the connection with the Holy Spirit could never murder. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that in terms of the future effect on our life, if we sin against the Holy Spirit, we are consigning ourselves to development to the sixth sphere, and that's it. There are plenty of people who did murder on earth yeah. who are way above that yeah. because they've worked through the issues with God. Yeah. Right? Now, when they murdered, they weren't way above that. They were right in hells, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But after they murdered, they, they worked through their issues, and whether it happened in the spirit world, which usually it did, mm -hmm. they eventually worked out their sins with people and with God and yeah. worked through that and got to that higher condition. So there's plenty of people who are in the sixth fear who were never a murderer, ever, yeah. their entire life. They never murdered anybody, right? Mm -hmm. But they're but still in the sixth fear. Their fear. happiness is limited in a way that someone who may have committed vile sins on earth who accepts God uh, is Isn't limited. not limited. Yes, yeah. and it's important to understand the limitation you place on yourself when you don't accept God's love is the most severe long-term limitation you will ever experience. Mm. But also, as we've highlighted in this discussion, there's s sort of severe limitations in terms of your potential for speed in your progress by of rejecting course. God's love. Of course. Yep. Yep. So notwithstanding all that, yep. if you do not have, you know, except if you sin against the Holy Spirit, if you know, don't want to receive God's love, you are basically limiting your future progress forever mm. while you do that sin. Yeah. It's a it's a unforgivable sin in that regard mm -hmm. in the sense that while you do it, yeah, you can't be forgiven for it. Yes. You, you've got to stop doing it in order to be forgiven yes. for it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. All right. Okay. The sin against the conscience. So, so what do so we mean by this that? This is really a, like a sin against truth. Mm -hmm. A sin against God's truth. Mm -hmm. In other words, a rejection of God's truth. Mm -hmm. Now you're purposefully, in when you're sinning against conscience, you're purposefully basically saying, I don't want to hear God's truth. I don't want to hear God's truth. Mm -hmm. Now, that obviously is a sin against God's truth. Mm -hmm. You know, you're basically saying that you want to establish your own truth and you don't want to accept God's, right? Now, that is going to cause some major problems in your life, some very severe problems even right up to the point of the sixth dimension, because a sixth dimension person who's living in the sixth dimension of the spirit world, even though they're quite happy, in the end is not completely blissful because they reject God's truth. Mm -hmm. So it's a major problem yeah. to reject God's truth. Yep. It's not minor, it's major, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. yep. The sin of arrogance. So this one, they were, here we're talking about ways that unless we... Um, involve God, we're never going to cease these sins. So the sin of arrogance. Yes, the sin of believing that you are a part of God. A part of God. Yeah, or a God, you know, a God. Yep. You know, both are just as bad mm -hmm. as each other. The new age belief systems that I am either a part of God or a God mm -hmm. within my own right, completely false. Mm -hmm. It's also sinning against God. Mm -hmm. It's also going to result in six fear progress only, nowhere further mm -hmm. than that. Yeah, it's a it's a major problem. And and also the, there's this problem, isn't there, of um, even what you mentioned earlier. It's not God's not important. My mm. opinion is far more important than God's opinion. That, I'm a that's part all of God arrogance. anyway, so I don't really need to worry about progressing. Mm -hmm. I don't need to worry about 
how I've hurt others or mm. how, you know, I don't have to worry about all these things. Yeah. It's all good. It's all yeah. wonderful, you know, and it's all bullshit, <laughs> <laughs> to be frank. Yeah. <laughs> and, and sorry if I offend you with a bit of swearing there, but, but it is. It's like it is totally crap that a person can say all of those things and, and think that at some point that they'll have nothing to repent for. Mm. Yes, yeah, it's, it's just not true. Mm -hmm. It's a very severe sin, yeah. actually, to yeah. believe that you're God or to believe that you're a part of God mm -hmm. in particular. Or to believe that you're better than God. Well, I don't know That's if anybody who believes in God believes they're better than God, but they often believe they are God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's a big problem. Well, but also I think there's the issue, you know, where I can believe in God, but I can think, well, avoiding my fear is far more important than you, God. Yeah, well, that's more of an emotional state of injury, I would classify okay. as. So that's not a sin of arrogance. Yeah, a person would have to get through that emotional state of injury before they got to the sixth fear anyway. Yeah, um, I see. It's, it's more to do with the state of believing that actually I am God, mm. that, that, you know, I, I'm a part of God already. I don't have to become a part of God. I don't have to receive God's love in order to become a part of God. Yep. I'm already a part of God. That, that is a major problem for your future if you believe that. Mm -hmm. Major problem. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Got you. All right. Um, the sin of denying God. Well, I think this one's pretty obvious. Yeah. You deny God, you're not going to have a relationship with God, so you limit yourself to six-fear development again. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's a long-term problem. While you deny God exists, you are also limiting yourself to the six-fear development. You might be relatively happy, but you have no understanding of how happy you could be. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. All right. The sin of blasphemy towards God or rejecting God's nature. This, so is, this is a very important common. one. <laughs> it is, and I've got some follow-up questions already in mind. So Can I'll I let just you say what it is first? Yes. Yeah. So, so what this is, and, and like a lot of religious people fall into this category where they're blaspheming God. Mm -hmm. They believe that God is a punishing God. They believe God's going to destroy the wicked. They believe God is wrathful. They believe God supports what only could be described as wicked acts such as war, you know, vengeance on earth and so forth. They, and even things as far as abuse of children is overlooked frequently mm -hmm. by these people, right? They believe that God's character is so flawed mm -hmm. that, that God would allow these particular things without any correction. Mm -hmm. That's what they believe, mm -hmm. right? Severe problem for them, mm -hmm. very severe. Because not only are they... Put, portraying themselves as understanding God. Mm -hmm. So it's a teaching issue. Mm -hmm. So they're misleading millions, billions, billions, mm -hmm. like there's three billion people on the planet misled by these beliefs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. three billion people, it's, like, it's a lot of people to mislead. Yeah. Then on top of that, they are also blaspheming God's very nature. Mm -hmm. so, so, so they've got major issues with God, actually. So while they believe they are the religious leaders actually stating what God really is. Mm -hmm. They are also blaspheming the very person of God mm -hmm. while they teach these particular things. And, and that is going to cause some major problems in the future. Right? The, and not only major problems, it's going to keep them in the hills for a long time if they remain in that state mm. because they are actually teaching false beliefs to other people about God. So what if I'm not teaching that, but I accept it as a belief and go about it? Well, that's damaging life. you. Yep. Uh, that damages you, you're accepting it as a belief. And if you then repeat the belief, now you're damaging others. Yeah. Right. So, yes, if you're only damaging you, that's not so bad. But, but it's hard to only damage you, particularly if you have children, because you'll probably repeat that belief to your children. Right. So you at least damage your children with it. Yeah. Right. So most people of Christian faith who have these beliefs have at least damaged their children with these beliefs. Mm -hmm. So there, there's, a, there's enough repentance there to work through. I think there's many non-Christian <coughs> people who have these beliefs also. Well, in, in one way, they may not be able to define and articulate that this Most is what Muslims they have these beliefs. Yeah, and most sort of almost um, people... Almost every religious faith has some of these beliefs. Um, and a lot of people who say they're not religious kind of harbour those this is what I want to pick sort up Sort of, yeah. And yeah. that's historical, isn't yeah. it? There's, there's a lot of historical emotions that are carried over from their parental or mm -hmm. grandparent beliefs that are still in them, really, you yes. know, where they believe they need a saviour and all these kind of things. 
Um, and, and a lot of even new age belief is now sort of look forward to saviour type of person. Or believe that life's continually punishing me and, and therefore it's yeah. a, there must be a punishing creator. Fatalistic viewpoints yes. and so forth. Yes, but, but, but to actually portray yourself as a leader of religion mm -hmm. while you also teach these beliefs, mm -hmm. that's pretty severe. Yeah. So I want to pick up with you this idea, something you just said very briefly earlier mm -hmm. about the difference between an injury that someone would work through and holding these things as belief systems. Because when I look at this list, I think, okay, I can see that I'm doing all of them. Um, but when I raise that with you in one way or another, I don't believe I'm part of God, but I certainly put um, my own opinions as more important than God's opinions many times, which I could call arrogance. Um, and when I raise that with you... And you, while you, you retain those beliefs, you're going to... I can't... Not, never be able to repent. Repent. Yes. Right. Yes. So that is correct, isn't it? That is it? correct. Yeah. yeah. Just to clarify, because you said, oh, but that's something that I would just see as an injury that you'll work through. Well, it is yeah. an injury. Yes. Because you do have a belief in God. Yes. So it's an injury about God's nature that you have to work through, that you've yep. been taught. You're not teaching others the, this, these teachings. No, no. So, so it is a personal issue you have with God. Yep. While it prevents you from ever repenting, yes. it's certainly you don't have the additional problem of teaching others the problem, yes. these particular so-called truths, Yes. You know, which are really errors. So you really, in this discussion now, that means you're talking about the fact that there's, these things are a sin, and with whether I'm teaching them or not, I'm going to have never to be able to repent. Them. Yes, I, I will have to repent for them. Yep. If I and it teach, will involve God. You can't do it with anybody else. Yes, yep. If I teach them to others and I garb them as personal beliefs, then I, I'm going to be in a lot of, there's a lot of sin, but also I restrain myself to going no further than the sixth sphere. Not only Is that, that what you're saying? Not only that, you've... You've now taught others to not have a relationship with God. Yes. In so the same, that, that's the So same. that's different than you just deciding to not have one. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. That's worse. Yes. When you teach others to... It's like, it's like you being a murderer and then teaching others to murder. Mm. Which one's worse? Mm. Isn't teaching others to murder even worse? Definitely. Of course it is. Yeah. Right? So, so it's the same when it comes to these things we've got. It's one thing for us to hold on to opinion with God about God mm -hmm. that we can choose to either release or not release. Yeah. We'll never be fully repentant yes. unless we go through the process with God mm -hmm. to release these particular mm -hmm. things. Never be fully repentant. However, that's our choice. Yep. We're allowed to do that if that's what we want to do. Six fear is the result for that. Mm -hmm. However, if we don't see the impact we've had with those teachings upon others, mm -hmm. we won't ever get to the six fear even. Mm. Yeah. We won't even get there because we won't see how those teachings have damaged others. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's an issue. Yeah. Right. So the only way we're going to get to the sixth fear is by seeing the teachings that we have done to damage others mm -hmm. and that we've engaged in and actually to feel sorry for them. Yeah. All right. So a lot of people are stuck in the fifth fear mm -hmm. because I've taught false things about God. They can never get to the sixth fear. They've never actually gone through the process of repenting about what they've taught to others because they don't think what they taught others is false. Mm. Right? But you're saying that even without repenting what I taught others about God, I can reach the fifth sphere? Sorry, the sixth sphere. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can't, you can reach the sixth sphere, but that's all. Mm -hmm. You can't go any higher. That's yep. it. But wouldn't I, if I've taught others, I thought you said earlier, if I've taught others these things, oh, I'm be not even going to get to the sixth. You'll be in the hells for a lot longer yeah. dealing with the fact that you taught others to do yes, the wrong okay. thing. Yeah. And how those particular yeah. teachings impacted yeah. them. Of course, you won't deal with the fact of how they've impacted their relationship with God. Mm. But you will deal with how their, these teachings have impacted their desire to go to war, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Right? So this blasphemy towards God about saying that God backs war under certain circumstances yes you're going to remain in the first fear with that one mm. right until you realize that actually there's no circumstance that war is justified you then you'll get to the second sphere mm -hmm. right and teaching that doing it for god is completely false and it's going to keep you in the first fear yeah right so you're going to have to work through the beliefs but even at the sixth fear once you got mm. there you still haven't recognized have you 
that you're that you've still impacted upon their relationship with God. Yes. However, it stands to reason, given everything else that we've spoken about in this discussion, um, that if I have done all of that on earth, taught these things, been a warm warmonger in the name of God and all these things, the level of compensatory pain I'm going to be in when I pass into the spirit world is also, there's almost a, a correlation between I might actually engage the process of repentance with God because it's so extreme. Like there's always yeah. that potential with God, isn't there? There, there is, yes. Yeah. So God's trying to assist us to know many. about his His um, presence, that he exists and that, you know, that we can engage that. Yeah, there's many spirits who have taught falsehood on the earth about God yep. believe, while they themselves believed in God. They passed into the deep, deep hells mm. and, and many of the, the popes and other ones like that mm. actually fall into this category. Mm where they've passed into the deep hells of the spirit world, but because they had a fundamental belief about God, they quickly realized the error, mm -hmm. right? And then worked through repentance with God mm -hmm. and quickly progressed it from that place. Mm. So there's plenty that have done that. Mm. So, so, you know, God's all about correcting the error, right? Yeah. That's, that, so everything can be forgiven as long as you go through the process of forgiveness, uh, of repentance. And here we're saying there's a list of things that God can't forgive while you don't repent for them. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. so once you repent for them, then it's been, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. Okay. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add on that and one? And can I just point out when I say God can't forgive, God forgives everything. Yeah. Right. It's whether we feel the effects of the forgiveness mm -hmm. or not. Right, and we don't we receive will not, that feeling. We will not receive the feeling of forgiveness mm -hmm. from God, even though God has forgiven, mm. until we go through the repentance on those issues. If, if I hope that is clear to people, people need to understand that God is always always forgiving, mm. but we don't feel the results of the forgiveness unless we go through a process of repentance, yeah. and. That process of repentance is essential to you feeling mm -hmm. that God has forgiven you. Mm -hmm. And unless you feel God has forgiven you, you consign yourself or, or, or constrain yourself to a certain level of development. Yeah. 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 It's interesting, isn't it? How much the forgiveness and repentance process actually gift to us. Yes. Yes. That's the yeah, same so it's essential for people yeah. to see that. So, so you can see from that list that while it's possible to forgive without God's help or mm -hmm. involvement, mm -hmm. although not advisable, yeah. it is impossible to repent for everything without God's involvement. Yeah. And, and that's why people who do things without God's involvement finish up with the limit of the sixth dimensional sphere mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and no further progress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pain will continue while I continue to reject God. So this is finally um, in follow-up to that last question. Does this mean that I will always have pain? Because when I'm sinning, I always have pain. While I remain out of a relationship with God. Yes. So even the people in the sixth sphere that you mentioned a lot in our last question, they still have pain. Yes. Yes. Many times it takes them thousands of years to recognize the pain they have. But uh, and what they normally do is when they hit the sixth sphere, they often start doing a whole heap of different things because you, you're powerful enough to do a whole heap of different things and you enjoy a lot of different things by that stage. You've gotten rid of a lot of your personal emotional injuries about yourself and about your capacity and so forth. So you, you do a lot of very like what you believe to be powerful things mm -hmm. and you do them you know, like you go from one to the other to the other over hundreds of years. Generally, you do mm -hmm. one thing for a hundred years and then you sort of tire of that and do another, mm -hmm. tire of that and do another. But after you've done that enough, you yep. start realizing that you tire of everything all the time. Yeah. <laughs> right. And this feels very dissatisfying. Mm. In addition to that, you also know you're not immortal. Yeah. Right. Because you realize that, you know, without growth, there is also a problem. So there's a mm. third issue about growth. Mm -hmm. You realize you're not growing. Mm -hmm. So that, and you know that everything that doesn't grow dies. Right. So that there's that as well that plays on your mind. So now you're starting to feel a bit of pain. 
many six sphere spirits don't call it pain mm -hmm. until they get to the seventh sphere then they call it pain mm. <laughs> <laughs> they just call it life yeah in the sixth sphere but but in the seventh sphere it's called pain and and they feel that pain mm -hmm. and and eventually that pain causes them to ponder mm. is there something that i've missed mm. is there something that's gone on here that i need to work through and work out that causes me to make a shift mm. right and and there is and that is the relationship with god mm. that that's the thing you've missed so while you reject a relationship with god you will naturally result even you might make heaps of progress mm -hmm. and result in relative happiness but you're always going to have some level of discontent yeah and so therefore some level of pain and more importantly than that even is you don't know what you're missing out on mm. mm -hmm. So, so while it feels to be a state of happiness, yep. because you don't know what you're missing out on, it's quite nice in some ways because you, at least you're not aware of what you're missing out on. Mm. But, but the problem is by not being aware of what you're missing out on, you can stay in st a state like that for thousands, tens of thousands of years mm. and not ever engage the more happier state. Mm. So you're saying then really the compensatory pain has diminished enough and you're not as sensitive to that. Uh, well, you're not sensitive to anything to do with your relationship with God. Mm. Obviously, of which there is compensation or already being accrued acting. all the time, penalties being accrued Of course, all one the time. of the penalties is the limit of the sixth fifth dimension. Yep. That's one of the penalties. But there's pain obviously being accrued in the soul as an emotion. Of course, yep. which builds up over time into dissatisfaction, discontent. And eventually it gets so intense that you've got to do something about it. Yep. Right. Because yep. It, it's a constant gnawing, nagging. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine it, it's almost like a dread that mm -hmm. develops over time for mm -hmm. them, for, for those in the sixth sphere. Mm -hmm. When God's love is available to them, mm -hmm. it develops. When God's love is not available to them, it doesn't develop. Yeah. So the fact that God's love is now available, this feeling is developing mm -hmm. in many of our six fear brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. where this is this gnawing thing that something's wrong, something's wrong, they're going to miss out on something. This is sort of a feeling of dread of some future pending event. Mm. Does that make sense? Definitely. And, and that's what they feel. I think that's interesting just to pick up on um, <laughs> at the end. It's a whole discussion in itself, and it's one that we do receive questions about a lot but it's about the closing of the celestial heavens. And it's very interesting that you say that when God's love is not available, there isn't that dreading and gnawing feeling. A lot of people feel that it's unjust that after everyone's been given the opportunity to receive God's love and some people reject it, there will be a closing of the what we call the celestial heavens and those people won't have the option to enter at least for some time. Mm. And they feel that that's very unjust, but... It, it seems very just to me in that one, the option was given, they exerted their desire to say no, they, they made a conscious choice. But then how loving is it that they don't have to experience that sense of dread and sense of, you know, compensation after they've made such a decision? Hmm. So, you know, this allows them to make the decision and live with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, but it's not a very satisfactory thing to do while God's love is being yeah. offered because you do feel a sense of pending dread mm. that it's going to be withdrawn and that you're missing out on something. Yeah. Now, once it is withdrawn, obviously the people that haven't acted upon that dread mm -hmm. are not going to feel it. Mm. And, and that's fine until somebody comes along in the future who goes, right, I, I believe this is possible again and, and maybe starts the whole process off again, yeah. you know. Yeah. and going through those particular things. Now, of course, the fact that a lot of people already knew mm -hmm. and, uh, and this has been offered back on Earth again is, is really going to be pretty unlikely that you don't know about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is going to add to the pain of living in the sixth sphere at some yeah. point, right? Yeah. In the long run, yeah. it will add to that pain. But before it was offered, there's not the pain that's experienced, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Very good, thank you. So rejecting the relationship with God is one of the most painful things you can do to the mm. rest of your life. Mm. Even though people on earth think it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. it's not that important. Mm. It is long term one of the most severe problems that you can create for yourself. Mm. It's sad in a way, isn't it? The, like one of the themes of our dis all the way through our discussion today is about 
how blocked humanity is collectively towards God and how much emotional baggage we have with God. Mm. And yet that is the source of um, our greatest, that relationship is the source of our greatest potential happiness, but also the rejection of it is creating so much pain Mm. for humanity collectively, but also ourselves individually. Yeah, Mm. yeah. And, you know, obviously, you know, there's a lot that can be said about that as different Mm. subjects, but here we're talking about the subject of forgiveness and repentance, and obviously engaging repentance is you you need god's help to do it yeah you have to have god's help to do it so so while forgiveness can be engaged uh without god's help to a degree Mm -hmm. and it's much better if you do it with Mm -hmm. repentance is never going to be able to be fully completed without god's help Mm -hmm. and and that's a major thing to bear in mind yeah and uh and, and a major if you if you make a decision that you don't want to believe in god you don't want to try the experiment well that's up to you mm. you know there's no punishment that you're going to get for that other than just the fact that you're not going to experience bliss well actually you've said it's actually going to be quite painful well it's quite in the long term hundreds, yeah. hundreds of thousands of years it might be quite painful yeah. yes yeah. but but the that's you know in itself you won't feel the pain so much because you don't believe in god so mm. so mm. you know you don't believe a relationship is possible, so how can you then feel the pain of yep. not having one? Yep. If you don't believe it's possible, mm. you're not going to feel the pain of not having it. Mm. So, you know, that, that's how it works. So so while you may believe that, isn't it better, just even as an experiment, <laughs> to go, well, you know, people are saying it's being offered, so why don't I go for it Yeah, and give it a go at least? Mm. Do it the way that God's designed to give it a go. Mm. Why don't I try that as an experiment? Because if I try that as an experiment then maybe it works out to be true and then you know i'll have further happiness and bliss than what i currently have mm. that would be a better decision mm-hmm. than just going ah oh, no stuff it it's not possible and <laughs> you know i'm not going to go for it yeah from a logical perspective it'd be a better decision mm-hmm. but god's not going to punish you for not going for it it's mm. not like he's going to put you back in the hills because you didn't do it yeah that's not the way it is You've already paid the penalties of those sins that you've done that might have put you in the hells in the first place. And now you're in the sixth fear. You'll be as happy as you are now. You know, you just won't be growing and you just won't be changing. You won't be working towards the infinite. You won't be experiencing all the truths of that state or the happiness or bliss of that state. And it's right for us to say this Mm. because people need to know what they're missing out Mm. on. It's not that God's going to punish them. It's that you're missing out on good things, you know. Yep. And that and that's right for us to say, no, it's important to understand your decisions will cause you to miss out on good things mm. unless you do something different. And I think it's very confronting for us to say, because every one of us has so many emotions with God personally. So it's not just a lighthearted, oh, I'll just try the experiment, you know, because there's a lot of um, stuff that we're trying to avoid in us about God. So saying it, saying it that directly can be very confronting because it's it's confronting that stuff that we're holding on to. Like I said, the biggest injuries on the planet are about your relationship mm. with God. Mm. They are the, by far the largest injuries that we have. They were the very first injuries that were engaged mm. by the very first human couple. And uh, and and they are the long, long, longest standing injuries. Yeah. And, and so naturally they're going to have the most pain associated with them, even to correct them. Mm-hmm. So it'd be much better to to engage the process of correcting those particular injuries and working through the potentiality that there being a God mm. than it would be just to deny God's existence mm-hmm. without any desire to work through the potentiality of God existing. Mm. So my suggestion to people, even who are atheists, is don't, don't you know, if you're going to be an atheist, fine i understand why you might do that from a religious perspective and so forth Mm. don't do it because you blame god for religion Mm -hmm. and don't do it just like it's an it's an illogical decision to to make a choice without knowing what it is you're denying yourself yeah so so it's not logical to do that if you pride yourself on your logic at least try the experiments Mm. because because it might turn out to be true and if it turns out to be true then you haven't you haven't lost the opportunity. Yeah. But if it turns out to be false, what have you lost? Nothing. So, so you know you're far better off trying the experiment than you are denying that God even exists and not even bothering to mm. try the experiment. Mm. So that's what I'd recommend to people. And we had a conversation 
recently, didn't we, with those spirits who were with me? Yes. You know, so I think it was Andrew, wasn't it? it was I, which spirits are we talking about now? <laughs> the ones that are with that were with me observing my life. Stuart? Stuart, sorry, yep. yes. Yep. So we had a conversation with Stuart, who was basically an atheist, yep. uh, observing my life. Yeah. And, and, you know, after a while he saw the reasons why he didn't want to deal with his relationship mm. with God. Mm. And, Very much so. And, yep. and has experienced some benefits to that. Yep. So, so my suggestion is every person, whether on the earth, an atheist or in the spirit world, I understand why you might feel inclined to fit, believe these things, mm. but um, at least try the experiment because mm. if you don't, you'll kick yourself <laughs> later. <laughs> you know, you'll be upset with yourself for not trying it, particularly when you know that it was available and a whole heap of people engaged it, but you just didn't for some reason, mm. Yeah, mm. whatever that reason was. Mm. Mm. Well, that probably concludes session 14 mm -hmm. in our series of forgiveness and repentance do you want to lead us in a quick review well i don't know if we need to review too much mm. but we need to state here that we've been discussing god's role in forgiveness and yeah, repentance, i'd like to just go over that which is different to discussing god's feelings mm. about a person who forgives and repents mm. so so I, I think it's important to point out now that our next discussion mm -hmm. is going to be about god's feelings about a person who forgives and yes. repents and these are, it's wonderful to consider God's feelings about things because yeah. most people sort of don't really see God as a God that has feelings, you no. know. And, and responding to us yeah, in a way uh, that's very personal. Yes, yes. And, and, uh, and obviously for, for us to have a personal relationship with God, we need to have feelings and God needs to have feelings. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so when we talk about relationship with God, we're talking about God having feelings about us and we having feelings about mm. God. And God has specific feelings about us when we go through the processes of forgiveness and repentance. Yeah. So I think it'd be wonderful to discuss those particular things. So we'll do that next. Just to quickly recap today's session. Yep. So what we did was we talked about how God is directly involved with us in the processes of forgiveness and repentance and how God is indirectly assisting us to engage forgiveness and repentance. And yes. we talked about the direct mechanisms of a personal relationship with God. Then we talked about how God influences others to assist us, how God's laws um, assist us. And we talked about how the design of our soul assists us to engage with forgiveness mm. and repentance. So God is really helping us. <laughs> Whether we, because most of our injuries would tell us that God isn't. Yes. So this is the problem we have. We, we, we believe already a lot of false things about God and God's nature and what God and God's personal level of interest in us. Yeah. And as a result of that, when we hear what we've talked about today, most people are going, oh, I don't believe that. I don't believe that because it, because we, we, we have already a set of beliefs about God mm. that control our beliefs about whether God is very interested in us or not. Yes. So, so God has a large role to play in forgiveness and repentance. Mm -hmm. It's just whether we are willing to see God's true nature as yeah. to whether we'll see the role. That's right. And we had that great discussion, didn't we, about what constitutes sincere prayer mm -hmm. and engaging with a sincere process over time in, in a prayerful way, I suppose you could call it, um, is essential to starting to take on an understanding of God's real feelings and God's real nature and and, yeah. and it's going to be great to speak in our next session, session 15, yeah. all about how God feels. Yeah. Even if we're not feeling it yet, it's lovely to know about yes. to help um, open us up a little bit more. Well, I'd, I'd be surprised if hardly any of our listeners feel it at yeah. this stage because it, because it you know, requires going through some very basic things about God, as we discussed today, mm -hmm. you know, getting truthful with God and mm -hmm. getting honest about what we really feel. But at least if we can say what the truth is, this will open people's idea to have a bit of minds, to have a bit of faith, mm -hmm. faith in God's goodness, yeah. that God is interested in our process. He's with us when the process He's going to help us through the process of forgiveness and repentance. He's going to be with us with the, the emotions that we address. We can talk about, about them to God. We don't need to deal with them with anybody else. Mm -hmm. We don't need to have long emails to Jesus and Mary mm -hmm. saying what we dealt with and what we didn't deal with and whatever, because we do all that with God. Yeah, That's what we do and sort it all, all that out with God then we will start to see the benefit of the relationship. Yeah. Unless we do that, we're going to be, feel like reliant on others, uh, dependent on others, 
and not see the benefit of the relationship specifically with God. Mm. In the end, any person who has that relationship with God is going to end up believing the same things, understanding the same things, understanding the same truths, mm -hmm. right? Even though they may have personal reflections about them, might be different, mm. but they'll understand the truth because God's sharing it with them. Yeah. And they'll have feeling of God's love and they'll understand the benefit of that. Mm. You know that that's the best thing for them to do mm -hmm. and and what we're trying to do now is help people get right there's this process of forgiveness and repentance that has to happen but but don't think you've got to go through it all yourself yeah. and stop relying on people to help mm. you go through it mm. because you need to go through this stuff with God because because if you don't go through it with God, you're not going to finish it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to. And you're going to lose a lot of time along the way. Exactly. Yeah. So so yeah. we need to encourage people to get on the process of forgiveness and repentance, but get onto it with God, mm -hmm. really on the mm -hmm. process with God. Because if, if they do it with God, then they're going to complete it and they're going to be over it at yeah. some point. Whereas if they don't do it with God, never going to be over it. Mm -hmm. And that, that'd, be a, that'd be terrible to put all this effort and energy into something only to never be finished. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, my darling, for yeah, speaking Yeah, no, it was an enjoyable today. conversation, yeah. babe. I like talking about God and God's yeah. nature <laughs> and, and just correcting a lot of false beliefs about God mm. and God's nature as well. It was very important, I feel. So I'm looking forward to our next discussion about yeah. some of God's feelings about things. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Me yeah. too. So we'll see you all next time. Yep. Thanks for joining us. Yep. Thanks for your time, guys. <laughs>